How much ammo do I think you need for SHTF? Today's video we're going to talk about, it, but not as a you should stock up this many rounds, but instead as a bare minimum. What is the bare minimum amount of a certain ammo that you should have and why? Why am I making this video? Because there's so many people out here telling you that you should have 5,000 rounds of ammunition, 10,000 rounds of ammunition, 1,000 rounds per gun, 1,000 rounds per weapon, 1,000 rounds per caliber. And you sit back and you think, you think, damn, that's expensive. I need 1,000 rounds of 12 gauge? Who the piss is going to shoot that much 12 gauge? So today's video, we're going to be breaking it down as a bare minimum. If I bought a weapon today that was a certain caliber, how many rounds of ammunition am I going to walk over to the counter and pick up while I'm picking up that weapon? Let's start off with everyone's favorite, which is the 22 LR. You see, the 22 LR is great for small game. Squirrels, possums, raccoons, even some large animals can be taken out with a very small round. And a lot of people will tell you that every day they're going to use a little 22 to make sure that they put food on the table for them and their family come SHTF. But you see, the problem with the 22 is not the round, but instead is your location. How many small game animals do you see in your backyard? What, maybe a couple squirrels? Maybe a rabbit or two? Maybe a possum every once in a while? How many rounds do you truly need if the small game population is few and far between? Because you have to understand if SHTF happens and I'm taking this small little round to go hunt my next meal, so is my neighbor. So is his neighbor. So is the neighbor beyond that. So if I have 10,000 rounds of 22, which some people recommend, that's 10,000 pieces of meat on my table. Now, not every shooter shoots 100%, so let's say you divide that by 10, 10,000 rounds divided by 10, that's still 1,000 animals that you're taking out. Have you seen 1,000 small game animals in your local area? Nah, doubt it. Unless you live in the boonies, unless you live so far out that your closest neighbor is one of the astronauts on the ISS, chances are you're not hitting a lot with this thing. Sure, you might go out hunting and get a squirrel and get a possum the next day and get a, a beaver or a badger or whatever the next day, maybe even take out a bear with it. But how many animals are actually in your area? See, that's the problem with the 22. You can stock up 10,000 rounds, they're super cheap. But how many are you actually going to use? If I bought a 22 today, I would go out and have 500 rounds. And again, that's bare minimum, 500 rounds. Now, I'm not the greatest shot, and I'll be honest with you, most other people aren't. So if you hit one out of every five shots with 500 rounds, that's still 100 critters on your table. 100 pieces of meat to survive you and your family. Now, again, if you're out hunting 100 critters, your neighbor's out hunting the same 100 critters. And then his neighbor, and the neighbor beside him, and the neighbor beside him, and that guy down the street. If they take away the bag limits and they take away the seasons, guess what? Everyone's using this. Everyone's using a 17 HMR to go out and bag the small game. And just like the Great Depression, the small game will disappear. So, yeah, it's cool that you have 10,000 rounds sitting around, but how many are you actually going to need? A lot of people say that a 12 gauge is the ultimate prepper weapon. A 12 gauge shotgun, why? Because you can put anything inside of a 12 gauge and take out basically anything on this planet. You got bird shot, right? Seven and eight, you got a little bird shot. You want to take out something bigger like a turkey? Go with the four shot. You want to take out a deer? Double alt buck. People say that the 12 gauge is the ultimate prepper survivalist gun. Because again, all you have to do is change out this right here to a different one, and now you've got a different weapon, basically. 12 gauge is great. Right? A lot of people say it's the best home defense gun. A lot of people say it's the best CQB gun. A lot of people say it's the best hunting gun. The problem with a 12 gauge is that for everything it can do, there is something that can do it better. Number eight shot right here. Good for squirrels, good for small birds. Yes, you'd be 100% correct. The 22 I just showed you is a whole hell of a lot better for squirrels. Your small games, 22 is far more accurate 
especially at distances. What about your larger games, right? Your buckshot. Deers. How far can you shoot a double out buckshot and it be accurate? 65, 75 yards, maybe. Maybe on a good day. How far can you shoot a 30 out six? A few hundred yards? Yeah, that, that's a big difference, right? The only good thing that a shotgun can do is hunt birds. Ducks, birds, migratory birds, that is the only good thing that it's good for. CQB, I'm not taking a shotgun in because you only got five rounds. Home defense, yeah, a home defense shotgun is what it, they're called. They are great for shooting the person out the door. Fair enough, right? But how many home defense situations are you going to find here in SHTF? If you let a person get into your home, you're kind of screwed, right? You should be popping that person while he's out, not let him get inside your home. So how many rounds would I recommend bare minimum? 100 rounds. My shotguns are not going to be a primary source during an SHTF event. Hate to tell these people that are like, oh, go shotgun. Not a primary source for me, right? I have other things that can do what this thing does 10 times better. Number three is pistols. People will tell you that you need as many pistol rounds as you do your basic rifle rounds, whether that's AR or AK or something else. They will tell you that you need equal parts these as all your others. A pistol is a sidearm. A pistol is a secondary unit. A pistol is not a primary unit, or should not be. The only time I could see a pistol being a primary unit is if you live in the city, and if you live in the city during SHTF, you're kind of screwed anyway. So the only place that I see pistols as being beneficial is, number one, if you run out of ammo on your primary weapon. That's why armed forces have a pistol as a backup. If your mag runs dry, you switch to the pistol makes sense but number two is a again going through living in a city scenario maybe you can't have an AR maybe you can't afford an AR maybe you live in New York City right rummaging city streets going through homes going through apartments it would be very difficult to do that with a full-size AR versus just a little pistol makes sense where I live there's not a city. So with that being said, how many pistol rounds do I recommend for an SHCF event? 100 rounds per weapon. If you have four 45s, you need 400 rounds. If you have one 9mm, you need 100 rounds of 9mm. If I bumped it up to 130 rounds, that is 10 full magazines plus the one in the chamber of pistols. If I'm shooting that much from my pistol, then there's a problem. That means I found myself in some sort of CQB situation, some sort of city situation I don't want to find myself in. So before we move on, let's talk about hunting and specialty rounds. Hunting, 30 out 6, 30, 30, 243, and your specialties, your Mausers, your Mosins, right? These rounds that have a primary purpose, which is to hunt uh, large animals at long distances. Most people I know 30 out 6, 30, 30, you're looking at five, 600 yard shots with a scoped rifle. Then on the other side of that, you have your specialty weapons, right? Mosins used to be the bread and butter of prepping because they were so cheap. These old World War II, early Vietnam weapons that you could pick up for cheap back in the day, but now they are priceless collections that if you had rounds for them, you're not finding anyone else who has rounds. How many rounds do you need for those weapons? Your larger deer hunting rifles, right? Your 30-30s, your 30 out 6s, 243s even. If your whole primary focus of that weapon is to hunt large game animals, and if you run out of ammo or if you run out of animals you're going to put it up, you don't need more than a box of ammo. Alright, 20 rounds. I say that because chances are you're not going to see 20 large animals after SHDF. Right, people are going to hunt all these animals to almost extinction if we do have an SHTF event that you sitting there with 500 rounds of 30 30, 30 out 6 going, ah, this is for deer and bear only. You're not going to see that many. So if I bought a 30 30 today, I would go out and buy one box of ammo and that would be the bare minimum that I would have. Sure, I can go up from there, but I don't want anything less than that. 
again, if its primary focus is only to hunt large animals, then you don't need that many rounds. But again, these weapons have a secondary purpose, right? Five, six, seven hundred yards, they still have enough knockdown power to knock down a two-letter mammal, right? If that's its secondary purpose, or maybe it becomes its primary focus, bare minimum 100 rounds. It changes the game. It changes the focus on that round. If it's going to be a external defense round, where you are taking five, six, seven hundred yard shots, you need something that can put something on its tail. But again, you're looking at capacity. My deer hunting rifle only holds five rounds. Sure, I can throw a couple more on the side, but you know it's only like nine total. Nine rounds to take down whatever that target is at 500 yards, and then what, right? If it's a band of marauders, sure, you can take out five, six of them, but then you've still got a bunch more coming and you're out of ammo. So let's move on to your specialties, right? Your Mosins, your Mausers, maybe your M1 Grands, right? These, these old-timey weapons. If my Mosin, if its primary focus is deer, hey, 20 rounds bare minimum, what more do I need? I'm not going to see that many deer. If my Mosin's focus is, hey, it's cheap, I bought a bunch of them, I'm going to pass them out to my buddies and my neighbors and my friends so they can defend my property, 60 rounds bare minimum. Ammo is going to be hard to come by, especially for those weapons. There's a reason we no longer use those rifles, right? They're old technology. Sure, can they hit a target? Absolutely. Do you want to use that as your primary weapon? Probably not. And again, magazine capacity. Five rounds max, maybe maybe some strip clips, right, if you can find them. They're slow. They might be accurate, depending on the ammo you buy but they're not that good. Let's move on to what I consider the quote-unquote battle rifles or the black scary rifles that the media hates. AR, AK. A lot of these I've said 100 rounds. A lot of these I've said less than 100 rounds, right? These are different, okay? Especially this one right here, the AR. If your primary focus, because you live out so far in the boonies that you don't have any neighbors, and your primary focus for this weapon is varmints. Armadillos, hogs, coyotes. You're not worried about defending that land from two-legged mammals, but instead from four-legged mammals. How many AR rounds do I recommend? Bare minimum, 60. Three max. Is there a possibility to see 60 varmint animals? Absolutely. Unlike deers, unlike bears, right varmint animals run in packs if you shoot one coyote chances are there's five or six others around is it normal to see 10 15 hogs roaming through a property at one time yeah that's that's pretty normal at least and if your focus is to defend that homestead from varmints right a hog population will tear up all of your homestead throughout the night at least 60 rounds now what is the actual purpose of these two rounds right here? 556 has been used for the US military for what the last 34 years now. And yeah, they've moved, they've upgraded, they've changed, but 556 is still where it's at. 762x39 AR or AK round primary uh military all around the world for foreign invaders, right? So these are black scary rifles. These are rounds that are designed to shoot fast, move fast, take out targets. That's why they come in 30 round magazines. So you can shoot a lot of rounds down range. If your focus on your homestead instead of four legged mammals is two legged mammals, three mags ain't enough. If you're suspecting to see a lot of those two legged mammals, chances are you have a plate carrier. At least, hopefully. And your plate carrier has little slots for these to go in. If I was buying an AR, I lost mine in a boating accident, but if I was going to buy one, I would count the amount of magazine holders that my plate carrier has. Maybe it's got three. One, two, three. Maybe it's got four. One, two, three, four. Maybe it's a double, right? Maybe it's got six. 
and then one for the rifle. For each of those magazines, I want two reloads. So you've got the ones that are in it, you've got a whole nother 120 rounds that are beside it, and you've got a whole nother 120 beside that. So you've got your primary, three plus one in the mag, and then two refills. Now maybe you like collecting magazines, right? You like reading them. Yeah, that's what you do with them. You like reading magazines, uh, so you buy a lot of them. Maybe you buy ten of them. Fill these up, or have the rounds to fill them up, and then have the rounds to fill them up two more times. Now let's add one more category, which is trade. A lot of people like to prep up things for the sole purpose of trade. I think that's not the best idea. If it's not for you specifically, don't prep it up for somebody else. A lot of people say that ammo is one of the top barter and trade items come an SHTF event. If somebody comes up to me and says, hey man, can you trade some ammo? That tells me he's out of ammo or getting the load. What's he going to do with this ammo? I don't know. Maybe two days from now, he's going to use this ammo that I give him to come back to me. And not in the fun way, right? He don't want to make another trade. He wants to use the ammo I traded him to come get his stuff back. If somebody comes up to me and says, hey man, you got any 22 LR ammo? I want to go hunting for small game. That tells me that he's no longer in the market. That tells me that he's probably no longer walking out in the woods with his 22 to shoot the small game that I also am looking for. All the ammo that I have is for me and my people. It is not to trade off. Now, if times get desperate, we get very bad sick, we run out of food, maybe. But the specific purpose is not to go and trade it off. I think people who stock up on barter and trade items for the specific purpose of barter and trading are going to end up getting themselves killed because they're going to say, well, shit, I got 10,000 rounds that I can trade off, and they're specifically for barter and trade. Well, somebody's going to say, well, I want it. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to get it. If you are going to set some back for the sole purpose of barter and trade, 556, 762 by 39, uh, 9, 45, 22 shotgun, right? Those are your, kind of your top calibers. Understand that when Tom down the street trades you and you give him a magazine and say, here you go, the next week he's going to come back and ask for more. That's how it works. But again, this was the bare minimum, right? Bare minimum, if this is what I bought today, this is what I would buy with it. Do you believe that it's 10,000 rounds per gun? Do you believe it's 10,000 rounds per caliber? Do you believe it's 10,000 rounds for everything combined, right? I've never liked those numbers and people throwing them out because then it's like, well shit, if I got a thousand shotgun, I'm good because then I just need 9,000 AR and oh, I got my 10,000, but I have nothing for a pistol. A thousand rounds per caliber, again, 12 gauge. You're not gonna shoot a thousand 12 gauge. But again, uh, my thoughts, right? These are my bare minimums. Yours might be a little different. Let me know down below. That's all I got for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoy, and I'm looking forward to the comments. That's all I got. Peace out.